Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Well, today, is, as I said at the beginning of the gathering, is a uh, special day in the Jewish calendar. Today's Passover. And so today, uh, for some, oh, sorry, we took Passover. Come on. No, uh, today is Pentecost. Sorry. Yeah. Some of you know why I'm a little whatever. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so welcome to those of you I haven't met. My name is Tom. Um, if you're on the, the, the leadership team, would you stand up? We just recognize you guys. So if you guys, as you guys are getting connected, um, you want to kind of find out how to get connected or you have questions, I just want to make sure you know that you can kind of reach out to these guys and uh, go, hey, I have a question. I have shared a couple weeks ago, like, it, it can't be, it's not possible for it to be my job to connect with every person and to pastor them and walk with them. Uh, and so that's why we have a whole group of um, pastors who you can reach out to for prayer. You can ask, hey, I'm really struggling in this area. I don't know what to do. I need counsel. Uh, and then the house churches are also, those guys are being equipped as pastors to really instruct you in the Word of God, but also um, that to teach us how to do the one another's, to live out the, the family of God uh, as believers. So... Be, be connected into those things. Uh, some of you have been coming a while, and y y you're not connected yet. Okay? So I, I, we can't more than just say, hey, get, get connected. Okay? So, like, I have um, four, I have, I have ten siblings, and it is up to me whether or not I go to Thanksgiving. So here's what I'm saying. I'm saying I can choose to be like, oh, I'm not connected to my family. Or I can choose to go to the things the family have, and I can get more connection. You know, this whole whole family thing's about connection, and even in your marriage, you you can be together, but you might not be connected. So this whole thing, you can have kids and be around and do fun stuff, but not be connected. Okay, so if you want the lifeblood of Jesus, this is His body, and there's a lifeblood in it, you have to get connected. Said, Jesus says, follow me, but then he says, abide in me. Okay, there's this abiding that comes when you realize you're the family of God and you begin to, to take part with the family of God and the life flood begins to flow. He says, you can't bear fruit without it, okay? So that's a free gift. I don't know where that came from. So I just felt that in the spirit. I want to talk today about Pentecost. Uh, we're in a kingdom series. I'm going to just hit pause for a second. This is a kingdom message, but it's um, not necessarily a part of that. I just think it's important. This is one of the, the most important days in, in human history um, that God did something and made it possible. So we have a couple festivals that I want to kind of teach about, and then we want to receive the gift of Pentecost. Amen? And so uh, for some of you, how, how many of you, you're going to be honest, you're like, you say Pentecost, and I really don't have much idea what you're talking about. Go ahead and just be honest. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. You guys are awesome. Okay, so how many of you feel like you know the, the, the major festivals of the Jewish people? Okay, see? So, so these are important. They really preach the gospel. So sometimes we, as Christians, we're like, yeah, that's like Judaism. That's like this. And then like, we're like Christian. And that's not how the early believers thought. They thought they were being grafted in as children of Abraham. And so we've, we kind of, we, we read the Old Testament, but maybe we don't recognize that these festivals and these things that God put as holy days, um, we just kind of forget about them, right? So how many of you, you didn't, you walked in here, you didn't know it was Pentecost? The rest, half of the other ones that didn't raise their hands are liars. <laughs> you guys, you guys, humble yourself and be honest, okay? So that's a joke. Some of you are offended. Religious spirit, leave. Um, so, so I'm gonna um, read um, everyone's favorite book. It's Leviticus, and uh, <laughs> only half of you got that, but that's fine. Leviticus 23. <laughs> I'm on a roll. All right, Leviticus 23. If you have your Bible, turn there. It 
If you study Leviticus a number uh, a, a number of times, it will become a favorite book. But it's like it's kind of like some things are mysteries that are only unlocked with certain revelations and certain things. So it's like a pathway. You don't read. There's never been a person who read Leviticus as a, a Jewish mind or as a, a Greek minded, a Westerner, and been like, "Oh, this makes total sense." There's never been. There's never. It's never happened. Okay. It it it's really precept upon precept upon precept, and it's later upon these precepts that you'll read it and go, "Oh my goodness, there's a gospel. There's a good news. There's a." Uh, a principle from the New Testament. There's all this stuff from the New Testament that's being, being displayed here. So, uh, but if you don't understand the New Testament, some of the deeper things and the symbols, you'll read Leviticus and be like, why are they killing so many animals? I have no idea what all this talk is about. So, so Father, I thank you for your word, and I ask that today you would bring um, your spirit upon it and make it alive, that there would be, yes, the reading of the the, the written word, the logos, but Lord, as it's ri- read, I ask that your spirit would make it a spoken from your lips to their hearts, your people's hearts, so that we can have the revelation um, and the joy that comes with it. In Jesus' name, amen. So I wanna, I'm going to start in verse 4, which is before Pentecost, um, but for us to understand the leading into Pentecost. Okay, verse 4 says this. These are the feasts of the Lord, the holy convocations. That's like holy days, which you shall proclaim uh, in, its pointed, in its appointed time. On the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. So, so maybe that's why I said Passover. But the first month and the 14th day. Now, the Jewish calendar is different than ours. We think, oh, so January... Right? That's not the first month of the Jewish calendar. So, so th- this would be for us um, a whole different mindset. But you can see the Easter kind of what we would call like Resurrection Sunday. It moves all around because it's, it's still kind of following the lunar calendar. So, so we, we look at the, the 14th day. Let's just say April 14th if it wasn't moving all over the place because of how the moon operates. So, so on the 14th day of April... You are to celebrate the Passover. Now, what's the Passover? If we go back to Exodus, we see that God has a people who are captives. They are prisoners. Now, this is a symbol of us as unbelievers, prisoners to sin, prisoners to Satan who owns sin, prisoners to death, okay? So Pharaoh represents Satan, and then it says at the beginning of Exodus chapter 1 that there was taskmasters, People who were keeping the people to do what they, 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 that Pharaoh wanted. And they would beat the people and instruct the people um, according to uh, Pharaoh. So this is like demons who are operating against people's lives to destroy their lives according to Satan's plans. Okay? So you're like, what? That's exactly the imagery in the New Testament. This is a continual pattern. All the way through the rest of the Jewish history from Passover, this is to be celebrated every single year because it's an imagery of God delivering his people. It's what he planned to do um, when Jesus the Messiah would come. So he says, I want you to celebrate it every year, the first month, the 14th day. I want, every year I want you to remember as Kelsey is saying, we need to remember. It's very important. The Lord didn't want them to forget. So Passover, we celebrate Passover. Uh, we would now call it Good Friday. Okay, so this is, this is what God did. He says, okay, I want you to sacrifice a lamb. I want you to take its blood. I want you to put it over the door po- post and over, over uh, um, the, the lintels, the, the side parts of the door. And um, there's going to be a spirit released as judgment upon Egypt, and if you don't have this blood, its judgment's going to fall on you as well. But everyone whose house is marked by the blood, the spirit of death will pass over and not affect that house, okay? Because this is going to be the final blow to Pharaoh and his rebellion against Yahweh, the God of the universe, that says, let my people go, okay? So then God comes through. He told Pharaoh, let him go. Nah, Okay, here's what's going to happen. I don't care. Okay, (laughs) we're going to go do it. (laughs) Wasn't without warning. They go and they cover the the doors. They have the the lamb. They eat of the lamb. 
and the spirit of death comes and kills the firstborn of every house in Egypt, even of the animals, everything. So then Pharaoh wakes up, his son is dead, and it's like, you get these people and you get out of here now. Okay, so they leave. Now God is leading them by his spirit into freedom. So they go and they come to the Red Sea and the Red Sea parts and they leave through the Red Sea. As they get to the other side, they sing a song. Yahweh is our salvation and he's delivered us. So God says, I want you to remember that on the first day or on the 14th day of the first month every year. Do this, okay? So we celebrate that now with Passover. What happened? Jesus, the Lamb of God. John the Baptist says, oh, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So Jesus becomes the Lamb of God on the cross, pours out his blood into all who choose. His blood covers you. His blood covers you. And, and so we now celebrate every year what we would call Good Friday, that Jesus Christ has made a way for us to be free from the captivity that we once lived in, sin, death, evil, all of it. Amen? So on that, uh, the, the, the next verse, verse, uh, verses 6, he says on the 15th day, okay? So it starts Friday night, Friday evening, goes through Saturday. On the next day, which is Sunday of the same month, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is to the Lord. In seven days, you must not, so that starts a seven-day um, um, festival, you must not eat unleavened bread. And on the first day, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall uh, do no customary work on it. And you shall offer an offering made by fire uh, in the Lord for seven days. And the seventh day shall be a holy convocation. Okay. Here's what's happening. This is the beginning. So Sunday would mark the beginning of, it would be Saturday night, but, the, but it would go in through Sunday, would mark the, the festival of unleavened bread. Here's what you would do. You would take unleavened bread. It's the first fruits, but it would be called the unleavened. And they would take these un, two loaves of barley, cheaper grain. It has already started to come out. You take a cheaper, a less valuable grain, and not add leaven into it, and you would wave it before the Lord. Okay, and you would eat that all week. Well, what's going on? How come they're doing that? Um, when they left in haste out of Egypt, they left, and they weren't able to make leavened bread. God actually told them not to, but they leave, and they're not a ha they don't have leavened bread. You're like, okay, who cares? What are you talking about? It's an imagery of leaven can be an imagery. Uh, it has multiple imageries, but... There's two main imageries. There's a good leaven and a, neg a bad leaven. One of God and one of Satan. Something that is put in and affects the whole thing. Sin is put in and affects your whole life. Okay? So sin is removed. So Jesus on Good Friday dies on the Passover. And we get to leave the house of sin, the house of bondage. And it's removed from us. Amen? So they say, for seven days, eat this bread in remembrance that your, the bad leaven was removed out of you. And they would call it, um, there's two, the next festival will be called the first fruits, but they would also call this the first fruits. The other one's like, this is named first fruits. This one they would call first fruits as well, but it's, it's ones of, of, of wheat and ones of barley. So Jesus became the first fruit of those who would raise from the dead. And so they would, they would, and so we see that Jesus is, 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 is celebrated as we celebrate his resurrection on, on Easter. Amen? So then the next festival, verse 10, when you come into the land, I will give to you, you are to reap its harvest. This is, uh, shall be, Sheaves of the first fruit of the harvest to the priest. And you shall wave the sheaves before the Lord. And to be accepted on your behalf on the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Okay, this is now what we were, we're, we're talking about, Pentecost. Okay, this is um, 50 days, right? Seven weeks after plus one day. So, so 49 days and then one day. And on this day, 
you are to take leavened bread and wave it before the Lord. Okay, here's what's happening. So they leave Egypt, and 50 days later, where are they? Mount Sinai. And when they go to Mount Sinai, we can read it. Exodus 19, verse 18. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by voice. That's awesome. Then the Lord came down on Mount Sinai, on the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. This is where Moses receives the law. Now, 50 days after they leave, they go and they receive, they get to receive the law. And God comes down, and the earth shakes. So the bad leaven is taken out, and now the good leaven gets to be placed in. The lesser grain, the greater grain. So one's barley, one's wheat. And, and now the good stuff is being put in. The law, the, the word of God, the voice of God is being placed within. So the voice of the enemy has been silenced. Sin has been removed. God is becoming their God coming down. This is the, the presence and the quaking, the shaking. This is God stepping into their company amongst them. And him, his presence begins to leaven and bring them what they need, life. Amen? So this is what we celebrate today. But we celebrate it in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it would be called Shavuot, not Shabbat, which is the Sabbath. Shavuot is Hebrew, but the Shav I just, in English, Shavuot. And it it's, just means, Passover just means 50. Or no, not Passover. Pentecost just means 50 in Greek. It's just 50. It's like, okay, well, it's, it's, the, the, it's the, the festival weeks or the first fruits, and it's 50 days after this. So this is what uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound. Remember what happened with Moses? A sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and filled the house where they were sitting. And when there appeared on them divided tongues as fire on each one of them. And with all, they were all filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. Okay, so there's a sound, a quaking, a rushing wind, and fire. What was happening with Moses? Same thing, right? Quaking. God is stepping into their midst. And so, here's what's here. Here's um, the, some of the imageries that we have to understand. So, seven weeks has to do with uh, seven seven weeks in one day has to do with an imagery. What other things do we have that are that are like that seven? Those patterns of seven. That seven seven um, seventy. What, what do we what do we have that seven um, sets of seven? So. It's jubilee, okay? And, and so there's this imagery also being played on of jubilee, these cycles of seven years where there will be rest every seven years, and then on the seventh set of it, there would be an ultimate year of rest where the Lord would provide everything for them. And so this is the Lord stepping in to be the one who provides everything for his people. So there's many symbols happening on this, and so uh, what's happening with the, the giving of the Spirit and the fire of God coming upon them? This is now uh, Ezekiel 36, verse 24. I will take from among the nations and gather you into, uh, out of the countries and the nations and into a land, and I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all the filthiness, from all your idolatry, and I will give you a new heart. Put a, a new spirit within you. I will take that heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and to keep my judgments. Right? I will cause you to follow my law. 
So the stone, that the, 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 the law that was put on stone wasn't what he intended. He's now, because of Jesus becoming the Lamb of God, able to step in and write his statues upon our hearts and put his spirit in there to cause us to be able to follow them. Amen? And so today we celebrate that Paso or that, that Pentecost, that 50 days, that jubilee, that, that, that filling of the Spirit, that writing of his word upon our hearts. But there's another symbol that's happening on this day for the Jewish people. If you were engaged to be married on Passover, your father would give you a gift to send to your bride and this gift would encourage her, prepare her, and it would be like a, a reminding of the day that's coming of their wedding. And so I want you to remember that the Holy Spirit, Ephesians says, is the, bound, the down payment of what's coming. And it's the Spirit of God that has been given to us as a gift to get us ready for Jesus. So as Esther was prepared with perfume, there was an attendant that was, she was given, and he was giving her perfume and just certain bathing and certain things that would prepare her for the king. Holy Spirit has given, given, given to us and within us to make us ready for the coming of, of Jesus the king as his bride. That's the gift that was given on Passover. And so this gift is given to you. Many things are happening. You're getting a new heart. The word of God is being written in your heart. It comes to prepare you for the coming of your king. It comes to encourage you that there is a wedding coming. Amen. So this is so important, this, this, this day that we celebrate today. It's not just an ordinary day. It's a special day. And so uh, I want to read a couple things that the Holy Spirit does. As I said, he's the helper getting us ready. John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. If I do not, I won't send the helper. But if I go, I will send him to you. So Holy Spirit helps us. He's your helper in time of need. And no matter what you're going through right now or whatever the Lord is calling you to, that you just don't feel like you can, or maybe you've made some sacrifices. I know some of you have made some sacrifices. You feel the call of God and you make decisions and then it just feels like, ah, did I make the right decision? And the Holy Spirit's there for you. He's there for you as your helper. In that time, in that waiting, there's a proposal you have to understand the Jewish, Jewish men, he would leave, a Jewish man would leave his home and he would travel many cities to the one he wanted to marry. And, and the engagement would start. He would leave his home and he would journey to her home. And he would knock on the door. She would open the door. He would make an engagement. He would propose to her. This is what God did. Christmas we celebrate. God left his home. Time and space, he left, he left the, 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 the eternity and stepped into time and space and came to our home. And he, he's proposing. Will you come with me? Will you be mine? And then on Pentecost, he sends a gift as a reminder. I'm coming. The wedding day is coming. Yes, I've been, we've been engaged. But there's a day that we will be united forever. And he sends his spirit as a reminder, as a guarantee, as an encouragement, as a preparation for that day. He's our helper. Be reminded today that whatever you're going through as a believer, some of you have been following Jesus for a week. Some of you have been following Jesus for a year. Some of you have been following Jesus for 20 years. Some of you have been following Jesus for 50 years. Anyone been following Jesus longer than 50 years? You guys have been following Jesus? How, how, fit, right, how many? How many years? Have, you should know. So, so, how many years? 60 years. We like that. Good job. Well done. So, so following Jesus 60 years, just finished the school of ministry first year. I love that. Still hungry. Still zealous for the wedding day that's coming. I love that. Come on. And so, we've been following Jesus a while. In a sense, there's been a... a a period of the engagement. People tell me, oh, we're getting married. We, 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 you know, I saw, oh, I saw on Facebook that you guys, uh, you proposed. When's the wedding? Oh, we're going to do it 2023. You say, what? <laughs> you know, like, 
you're a believer? You're, you're going to try to wait that long for your purity, for all of that? The only reason, reason you'd make a long thing like that is you're already getting some of the benefits of marriage now. That's what I'm believing. So, so, so repent, you old sinner. So, um, so anyway, so this, this, <laughs> uh, so, so this engagement, let's say it extends and it goes longer. That, that some of you, the extent of your longing and waiting to be joined, one, has been a long, been 60 years, been a long time. I want you to be encouraged today. That's what I'm going to ask at the end of this time. We're going to just pray. Holy Spirit, would you come as the gift to encourage us? In our waiting, may we not forget that there's a day coming. May we not take our day off that, that day. If I were to ask any bride uh, who's getting married, if I was asked Rachel, uh, hey, Rachel, I'd asked her this Friday, hey, how many days to the wedding? She, she knew, right? She was just, she had the date. She knew how many days. She was counting down, okay? Her attention is on Bradford. Bradford gets married in a couple weeks, for those of you who don't know. So Bradford's excited. She's excited. Brad, for how many days until, until you're, you're 20 days. 20 days. <laughs> Come on. I didn't even have to ask because I know, but for other reasons. <laughs> so, so, um, so th this excitement between the bride and the bridegroom, this isn't, this isn't fate as it gets closer. It increases. It increases. It increases. So, so Bradford is, is, is more excited now than he was two months ago. It's drawing. I can, I can smell the food of the time. I can see her in her dress. I can just, oh, it's getting so close. Be encouraged. Be reminded. He's coming, church. He's coming. Today, might have, you might have walked in here on an ordinary day. Your kids didn't want to get up on time. All the stuff. You, you didn't want to get up. You know, you're, whatever it was, be encouraged this morning. Your bridegroom's attention is upon you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Don't, don't, don't expect, in a sense, a long engagement. He says, always be ready for the day of his... You know, that's what the Jewish people... They wouldn't know the day nor the hour that the bridegroom would get the bride. This is, you have to understand this, in the Jewish wedding, that's kind of messed up for us in the Greek minds. We're like, what? <laughs> yep, you've got to be ready at all times. The day's coming. I'm not going to tell you the day. I want to see if you're going to be ready when the day comes. Are you really ready for your bridegroom? So he would wait. And it wouldn't be the bridegroom's decision. It would be the father's decision when the bridegroom could go get his bride. He didn't know. So when Jesus is asked, when's the, when's the day? He says, I don't know. Only the Father knows. Because he's talking about a wedding. Some of us are just waiting for Jesus to return so we can go to heaven. But God's waiting to come because he's, he's waiting to come for a wedding. He's coming for his bride. God didn't just want children. He wanted a bride. So he leaves heaven to receive one. And he's right now getting ready for that day. The bridegroom would be building a house. He would, leave, he, would, he, would, he would sometimes stay in his father's house and extend for the first couple years off his father's house, and he would build that. If he was already later in years, he would have his own. He would be building and preparing because they're going to have children and all this stuff, right? So he'd be preparing a house. What does Jesus say in John 14? I go to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I wouldn't tell you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'll come back. And when I come, we'll go to that place. Be encouraged today. Your bridegroom is preparing a place for you. He has given the Spirit as a helper to you to give you the strength and the encouragement and, and, the, and, the, and the preparation. But don't take your eyes off of the wedding. Don't take your eyes off the wedding and get distracted on you. You know, I, we run nonprofits that do missions work and churches, and I have a business and, and, and all these other things. But you better believe that my attention is on Jesus in prayer and in fasting and, and, and over you. And, and, and 
Because my job is, 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 is partly joined with the helper to help you get ready. That's the calling on my life, is I've joined partnership with the Holy Spirit in preparation for his bride. And so we have many things, but my attention is on that. That's why when God called me to leave building cell towers and do all that, it was easy. I lost most of my income. I didn't even think twice. When I planted my first church, they said, we'll pay you $800 a month. I have three kids in a house. It's impossible. I said, let's do it. I got a bridegroom coming. I feel in the spirit I'm supposed to do this. No questions asked. Let's do it. I spent all my savings, all the, the money I had saved up for retirement. Took, had to take it all out to take care of my family. I said, let's do it. I have one agenda. It's to get ready for the banquet of the bridegroom. That's it. So I encourage you to today, whatever your attention and your fears and all the different stuff you've got going on, you are going to live forever. The, the, the shortness of the days. How many of you realize how, how, how days go so fast, weeks so fast, years so fast? The young people in the room are like, what are you talking about? Said, Those who are 80 are like, yeah, the last 60 years, man, it's going fast. <laughs> And Jesus says, like a vapor. Do not take your attention. Today, let us refocus. There's a day coming. There's an hour. We don't know when it is, but he'll be here. Are you ready? Let us make ourselves ready this morning. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit sanctifies the believer. 1 Corinthians. The sanctified means to make holy, to purify. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. He says, you were washed, you were sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. He is making you ready. He is helping you get ready. He's washing away the sin. He's getting rid of the, in the, the place of the heart. He's helping your thoughts be like his thoughts. He's, he's helping your, your, your emotional world be whole. He's helping your will be the Father's will. He's, he's changing the things that were once wicked when we dreamed about things that just didn't please him. And he's given us new dreams. The passions we once had that didn't please him, he's given us new passions. And for those of you in this room, I just sense this right now, you have passions that you know don't please God, but you don't know how to change your passion. It's only done by the Spirit of God. And we're here today. We're going to have a time to pray. For those of you who just want the fresh gift of the Father to encourage you, you say, I just, I just feel like I'm, sometimes, <laughs> anyone ever fast before, and you get a couple days in, and you just feel like this? <laughs> you just feel like, what? I can't lift my feet. So, so this 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 um, spirit has been given today if you're here and you just kind of feel like you're maybe not fasting but you just feel kind of like you're just making it through your week whatever's going on things might be uh, excel for you he's here to strengthen and encourage you to give you to rejuvenate you we're going to invite you to come up we're going to pray for you where you are but if you want that fresh we want to pray for you but also if you have struggles your passions are not towards God. You want them to be. You're like, oh, you got one eye over here. You're trying to turn your full attention towards God. But there's this other thing. Some of you, it's, it's, it's addictions. Whether that addiction is, is narcotics or, or tobacco or, or alcohol or, or um, uh, lustful things, pornography and different, different things. You, you, you don't want them, but it feels like they have you. And you want God to have you. I want you to come forward at the end of the time. We're going to pray for you. Okay? Because there's, there's more than one spirit. That's why the, the Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit. There's more than one type of spirit. The whole last couple of days, we've been trying to teach people about that. There's other spirits. Unclean spirits. There's a Holy Spirit, and there's unclean. Holy being clean and an unclean. And so some of those passions, when you can't, when you're like, I love God, but my passions are being pulled in a direction I don't want them to be. Sometimes we need to say to the taskmasters, let my people go. And we strike them by the power of God, the Spirit of God, and we say, get off of God's people. Let them go. Listen, if you can't give God your passion, 
your time in prayer, your time in the Word of God, any fasting or any of those things, you just don't, you're like, I, can't, I couldn't even think about doing that. There might be something else at play. If you want to stop smoking and you can't stop smoking, you're like, oh, I just don't want to do it. Ah. Come for prayer. If you're doing any other drug or porn or any of that stuff, we've seen it all. It doesn't matter. Receive prayer. If, you're, if your marriage, your current physical marriage, the Spirit of God is to come and let's go to the next one. Because I'm going to talk about that in a second. The Holy Spirit has the power to make you close to Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. We all, with unveiled faces, contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image and ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is Spirit. The Spirit is given to you so you can behold Jesus, His beauty, His splendor. And then it says, and be made like Him. So in your marriage, you're treating your spouse in a way you shouldn't. That's not how God wants to treat you. He wants you to treat others how He treats you. Loving, kind, and merciful. If that's not happening, come forward. May the Spirit of God come upon you today to <sighs> so that you can act, be conformed to His glory, and act accordingly. Amen? The Holy Spirit helps us do the Father's will. Acts chapter 8, verse 29 Philip is taken by the Spirit of God to go up to the chariot of the Ethiopian. Here's what I'm saying. We're kind of going away, and God goes, I have a will that this man over here would be saved. And Philip is just caught up by the Spirit to do the Father's will. What did Jesus say? I'm only doing my Father's will. Every day he's caught up. You've been watching uh, The Chosen. He says, oh, I have a mission today. I got to go to the pool of Bethesda. I have a mission today. I love that. I got a mission today. It wasn't his mission. It was the Father's mission. He was just submitted to it. The Father has a desire today. I want to do it. It's my joy to make him, bring him joy. And so it is a joy to be caught by the Spirit to do the Father's will. Amen? The Holy Spirit is our source of gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. There's different kinds of spiritual gifts that the same Spirit is the source of them all. And there are different kinds of services, but the same Lord. God works in different ways, but in the same God, it's the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each to help us. So it's the Spirit of God as He gives us this gift, this gift in the waiting to make, this is more of a kingdom talk, to make earth ready for the coming of the King, to get the wedding ready. He's not leaving one place and coming to another to have a wedding, and that wedding isn't prepared. So the bride should be prepared, but the place should be prepared. Amen? And so we're getting the place ready, but the Spirit is given to us to enhance in us supernatural, in a sense, abilities to get the wedding ready. And so we need those spiritual gifts. Holy Spirit imparts God's love into us. If you're here today, how many of you just, you just be honest, you say, man, I, I could take another, another dose of love from the Father. My hands, both of them up, my feet. I put both feet up, make sure. It says this, Romans chapter 5, verse 3, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, Knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance um, produces character, character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So today, if you're feeling just like, man, well, you don't know who you are in Christ, you don't feel like he loves you, any of that, today we're going to ask for the Spirit to be poured into our hearts to fill us with the Father's love. Amen? Holy Spirit teaches us and gives insight. John chapter 14, 21. The Helper, Holy Spirit, whom the Father sent in my name. See, the gift was given from the Father to the bride, to the bridegroom. The Father sends this gift to teach you all things and to bring you into remembrance of all that I have said. So he's going to 
if you don't understand the scriptures, if you don't understand, you read the scriptures, but they don't understand, guess what you need? The gift, the Holy Spirit, to come and to help you understand Jesus. So we need this gift, amen? Romans 8, 26, he guides our prayers. It says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness when we don't know what to pray for. He prays for us. He, he um, the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So we've been given this ability to call out to, to Abba Father and to pray and, to, 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 uh, and the Spirit intercedes for us. He leads us in prayer. Holy Spirit um, realizes evangelism through us. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says, You will receive the power of the Spirit. It will come upon you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And so I just, I want to kind of, everything you need, you know, the Spirit is God on earth today. People who reject Holy Spirit are rejecting God. Holy Spirit is God on earth. Jesus is seated at the right hand in the third heaven next to the Father. And he has sent us a gift, the helper, the encourager, the preparer, the teacher, the purifier. Amen? He's God on earth. He's all that you need to teach you the scriptures, to build your heart with passion and love for God, for his coming. So if you need that today, then guess what you need? You need the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 11, verse 9, he said, Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. For everyone who asks, receives. Who seeks, finds. Who knocks, the door is open. If a son asks for bread from his father, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent instead of a fish? If he asks for an egg, Will you offer him a scorpion? If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit when you ask him? We like that. So all that you need today, you need encouragement, you need strength, you need to, uh, 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 whatever it is, it's in him. Amen? Would you stand? We're going to just ask the Father for the gift, his bread, the Spirit of God. I need it this morning. Anyone else need it this morning? <laughs> Take a fresh dose of the Holy Ghost. Can I get some music? Oh, Jared's going to play for us. <laughs> you guys have a song for us? Oh, Jubilee. What? <laughs> How did that happen? Okay, we're going to play this song. While we play this song, I want you just to begin to say, Father, would you fill me with a fresh gift? Today is the day you give a gift to your bride, to the bride of your, your son. Today is the day the father sends a gift to encourage the bride of, this, of his son. Amen? So say, Father, give us the gift that would encourage us until our wedding day. Give us the gift. We ask for the gift. We ask for the bread of heaven. Today. Pour it out, Lord. If you are blessed by this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing content.